it's quite difficult to characterize it because there are actually quite a variety of spaces. Um, I think that really for me it's about a kind of journey and experience that starts off at the tableland at the top and then descends down to the base of the trees and up to the treetops. So you're really experiencing these very different topographic conditions, these kind of horizontal datums, all the way from the, the kind of most private spaces, the bedrooms, to the most public spaces of the house. The site is so unique um, in terms of its location and then the proximity and the, the kind of almost embracing of the landscape changes from day to day, from season to season, from day to night. The attention to detail is really magnificent and it's, watching, it's like watching a finely crafted film. You can watch it over and over and over again and the more you watch it, the more you see. And for me, one of the biggest aspects of this example, I guess, is the quality of light in this house. Every single day of, of the year, the light is different. Every time of day, every time of the season, it's totally different and it, it transforms the space and the architecture is so, so predicated on the quality of light in this, in this house, it's, it's really quite amazing. It's kind of amazing. It's pretty low, low stress, right? <laughs> so the musicians come, they can adjust all the lighting from the upper levels. They don't really need any big ladders or anything. So they just do it kind of from the upper level. And Jim controls everything from his iPad. And he can actually do a whole performance for 200 people and he's the one that just gets all set up. It's pretty low key. So one of the things Jim wanted at the very beginning was actually um, to somehow celebrate his love of glass. And throughout the whole house there are beautiful glass uh, pieces that he's collected over a long period of time. But he wanted something that wasn't um, an object but was really integrated into the house as a whole. So we actually worked very closely with an artist, Mimi Gelman, um, our structural engineers uh, at Blackwell, uh, David Bowick, and our, um, our architectural team. And in a way created something that I think is quite unique. It's a kind of um, a very private experience. It takes many people to build a building and that Toronto is really an immigrant culture. People come from all over the world. And one expression of that kind of multicultural condition are enormous number of fabricators that work in the greater Toronto area. And they come from different parts of the world. They bring with them enormous skills and that so many of those skills are actually celebrated in this house. The woodwork, the kind of miscellaneous metals, the bronze pieces, the leather, all come together and are really a tribute to this kind of enormous group of people that really came to, in effect, do the best that they could do with their amazing skill set to be realized in the project. For Canada, I mean, it kind of is like the Villa Savoy. It kind of has that position culturally, architecturally, with its significance of the owner, the kind of the boldness of the owner's vision to trust an architect and to believe in an architect enough to leave them to their own creative devices. You can see the drawings, you can see the models and get a, you know, a fairly good conception of what it's all about. But to actually be here with the finishing steps is a it's another matter, it's a revelation, um, and, and uh, a very happy revelation. One of the great joys is the, um, is the railings from uh, leather, bronze, and steel mesh, and the way it swoops and swirls its way around here and is echoed in the floor, not everybody looks down at the floor to see that and see how that's reflected. And looking up in the ceiling to see how the drywall there 
reflects these same type of curves. So you've got these layers here. So Jim had three requests. Uh, uh, curves, but not just, not a curve that is a line on the ground. Calculus really demands a volumetric curve. It's a different kind of curve. So in a way we needed to create a volume that was about shaped by curves as opposed to a line that is a curve on the ground. I mean, we knew that curves would complicate the uh, design and construction of the house. But the extent to which that statement is true was uh, revealed in, in the happenings. And it's based on a calculus principle that, that, that um, an approximation to a curve is given by a series of straight lines. And the smaller the, the straight lines, the, the, the greater, the, the narrower these things are, the closer they are to, uh, to, to a curve. What's the alternative? Straight line. How boring is that? Um, all lines have the same shape. They're straight. Um, calculus can be regarded as the mathematics of curves. And there's just an infinite variety of them. And, and they're, so they're very interesting to a mathematician in particular, but I would have thought to Anybody, Anybody. You, you know, uh, curves are, you know, they make the world go round.